Secondary hypertension. When an identifiable condition causes hypertension as a secondary problem, we refer to it as secondary hypertension. Secondary hypertension accounts for only 5% of cases. Renal artery stenosis. A stenosis, or narrowing of the renal artery, reduces blood flow to the kidney being supplied by that narrow artery. This will deprive it of oxygen and nutrients, making it believe that the body is dehydrated or hypovolemic, and as a response, triggers the kidney to activate the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, or RAS, which ultimately constricts arterioles and increases renal water absorption. Renal artery stenosis could occur because of a congenital birth defect or because of a fatty plaque inside the renal artery. In either case, the primary problem is the renal artery stenosis, which triggers the kidneys to activate the RAS system to increase blood volume and therefore produce hypertension. The narrow renal artery obstructs blood flow and produces turbulence that generates a characteristic continuous murmur in the periumbilical area or flanks. This region corresponds to the location of the artery and the kidneys. The murmur results when the smooth laminar flow of blood is disrupted by the stenosis. In addition, the affected kidney will atrophy and become smaller than the non-affected kidney due to the reduced supply of blood flow, which will deprive it of oxygen and nutrients. And going back to the differences between primary and secondary hypertension, these patients are usually resistant to hypertensive treatment unless the stenosis is resolved, because that is the source of the problem. Endocrine tumors. Another example would be endocrine tumors that hypersecrete cortisol or thyroid hormone, both of which can potentiate the effects of the sympathetic nervous system and cause arterial constriction, increased cardiac contraction, and blood volume expansion by activating the RAS. Medicines. Medications such as oral contraceptive pills and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can influence and promote hypertension. OCPs are believed to induce the hormone that increases blood pressure, and chronic non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are notorious for affecting and damaging the kidneys. Sleep apnea. The abnormal nighttime breathing pattern, sleep apnea, occurs either when the pharyngeal muscles relax and push back obstructing the airway, or when the central nervous system doesn't orchestrate the respiratory muscles well. Ultimately, the decreased pulmonary ventilation results in a temporary oxygen deprivation, hypoxemia or decreased oxygen in the blood. When the heart and brain get depleted of oxygenated blood, the sympathetic nervous system gets activated to dilate the bronchi and increase cardiac contraction to increase blood flow. However, as explained earlier, the sympathetic nervous system are notorious for activating the RAS and increasing blood pressure. In addition, the hypoxemia or decreased oxygen levels in the blood stresses tissues and generates oxidant stress and inflammation which eventually causes alterations in vascular function and structure, promoting the development of hypertension. Once again, the goal of management involves treating the primary problem rather than medicating the hypertension, although to relieve some of the symptoms, antihypertensive medications are sometimes considered.